what you think about je Brexit generally. So obviously the, uh, the withdrawal agreement has just been agreed by the EU and the UK, Theresa May is putting it to her cabinet today. Um, w w where do you assess where, where we're at with Brexit? Well, I've got a simple criteria. I, I campaigned for leave, I voted leave, and my big um, campaign is, is about sovereignty. I want to be in a position where people in my constituency, in my country, they vote for the members of parliament who make their laws, and if they don't like the laws that their MPs making, they vote them out and vote in somebody else. And obviously, while we're in the European Union, an increasing proportion of our laws are actually made by unelected, unaccountable bureaucrats in Brussels, not in Westminster. So any uh, exit from the European Union that doesn't return all our laws making capacity to Westminster is unacceptable. Clearly the withdrawal agreement and the proposal, the Chequers proposals, uh, that we stay under a common rule book where a huge swathe of our laws will be made by Brussels and uh, we'll accept them and future amendments to laws affecting our manufacturing industries um, could well be made in a way that are detrimental to UK businesses. We won't even have a seat at the table, we won't have a veto, we'll just have to take the rules. And obviously I'm really keen on, on free trade. Uh, deals with the growing economies. That's the major economic benefit of Brexit and we need to show those economic benefits to uh, our population. If we're in a customs union, we won't be able to forge those free trade deals with the USA, Australia, New Zealand. Theresa May says we can and technically she's correct that we could, but we'd only be able to do it on services and that's what we sell to the rest of the world. So there'll be no incentive for them to do a deal with us because we can only do a free trade deal on services and they want to sell us their goods. It also keeps the UK, which really suits the European Union, as a captive market for overpriced EU goods, um, backed up by their tariffs. Um, we buy uh, twice as many goods from the EU as we sell to them, so we've got a huge trade deficit and it keeps that market really for the European Union. And effectively, after we've left the EU, British consumers will still be paying over the odds for EU goods. Is this really Brexit? It's not Brexit uh, that we promised the British people. It's not the Brexit that Theresa May promised us. In the Mansion House speech, the Florence speech, uh, the Lancaster House speech, she said that we want to take back control of our money, our border, our laws, and leave the single market, leave the customs union, leave the jurisdiction of the European Court of Justice. Now. Back in March, uh, Donald Tusk, one of the EU presidents, said that the, if having spoken to Theresa May and they were her declared ambitions, the only way to achieve that was to have a simple free trade agreement with the European Union, aka Super Canada. Um, that was the solution that would deliver what Theresa May had promised the British people. Well, what we then find out is that Ollie Robbins, under guidance from the Prime Minister, set out to lay out the Chequers proposals. They were all created in secret, probably, possibly even from last October, certainly from January, uh, in the DEX EU department, without the knowledge of David Davis, the Secretary of State, without the knowledge of Steve Baker, the, the Minister. And three days before Chequers, um, when David Davis thought he was going to be presenting a super Canada type free trade deal as the arrangement going forward, he was told by number 10 that forget all that, we've been working on this for months. And it actually transpired that uh, a number of David Davis's own civil servants in his department had been working on the Chequers proposals without telling him for months. I mean, it's, it, it beggars belief that constitutionally you could deceive your own Secretary of State like that. And he had no choice but to resign, as did Steve Baker, who they're both very honourable men. Do you feel lied to by the Prime Minister? Well, um, it's fair to say that the Prime Minister has been uh, economical with the truth when it suited her. Um, I feel betrayed. Uh, I feel that we're being told one thing uh, and the EU are being told another. Um, and that time has been used up and then all the excuses will come out that there's no time for anything else when time has been deliberately used up. I feel that the EU 
know the agenda that they're working to. I, I think a lot of the, um, shall we say, disagreements between Number 10 and the EU over the last few months have been stage managed. It's very interesting, and I don't believe in coincidences, that um, the, the Dutch government, uh, the Dutch embassy in London have been liaising with me to discuss my views on Brexit over the last few months. And three weeks ago they were very insistent, uh, before we knew the timetable of this week's events, that they wanted a meeting with me at 10 o'clock this morning. Um, I can't believe that they didn't know that today was the day when everything was going to break, and they knew that at least three weeks ago. I mean, we've seen this with Merkel, so we've been shown Czechs before. Czech and Merkel and, uh, and uh, Mark Rutter. Um, yes, the, uh, the, the Dutch um, Prime Minister. Yes, uh, I was told by someone who worked in DEXEU as a civil servant that uh, he believed that Merkel and Rutter had seen the Czechs' proposals before the Cabinet. So the, the withdrawal agreement is going through the Cabinet at the moment. Do you call on the Cabinet to, um, at least especially the Brexiteers in the Cabinet, to stand up for the 17.4 million people and resign in principle? Yes, um, I think uh, no Brexiteer, in my view, could accept uh, the Chequers proposals and the withdrawal agreement draft that you're now seeing, we'll now see this, this week, will be considerably worse than Chequers because various other concessions have had to be made by the Prime Minister apparently during the negotiations and anyone, any Brexiteer with any honour w would not be able to accept that and would have to resign if the Prime Minister wouldn't uh, drop the policy. But when we've been trying to get Theresa May to chuck Chequers for several months now, um, there's no doubt, I mean she's a very difficult woman apparently. She is especially to the ERG and sort of Brexiteer Tory MPs, but perhaps not to... Uh, well, I think even, I mean, I, I put my letter of no confidence in back in July when I saw the Chequers proposals. That was unacceptable. I think it was unacceptable to colleagues. There was the misplaced belief in the ERG for some time that the, we could perhaps persuade the Prime Minister to pivot away to a Super Canada deal, which, which would be much more popular, not only in the Parliamentary Party, but out there in the country. I mean, when you actually look at the you know, the flagship policy for leaving the European Union with probably less than 10% support in the country, I mean, it's just not tenable, is it? You know, this is this is how we're going to be judged at the next general election, is how we deliver Brexit. And we're, we're delivering a Brexit, even based on checkers, and it's going to be worse than that, that barely 10% of the population could support as their first choice for leaving the European Union. So, I, but I think now, given what's happened in the last 24 hours, that the scales have dropped from the eyes of all of the ERG. I honestly believe that um, there's a large number of letters of, com of calling for a confidence vote in the Prime Minister that are either in on Mr Brady's desk or, or hitting his desk at this very, very moment. Nigel Farage today said that this was the worst deal in history. Are you in agreement with him? It's probably the worst deal since uh, Olaf the Terrible ordered a thousand Viking helmets with the horns on the inside. That's a great sound, though. <laughs> That's great. Um, uh, one more question um, about Oliver Roberts, because he's, and the civil service generally, <coughs> do you think the civil service have overstepped their mark throughout this whole process? I think we've got a Prime Minister who over-relies on what she sees as trusted advisers and they may be spads or uh, civil servants. I think she's got a history of that, uh, the Nick and Fiona fiasco, and now Ollie Robbins. I think mistakenly, um, Theresa May's believe that you know, Ollie Robbins was Whitehall's man in Brussels, and I think history will end up showing that he's actually Brussels' man in Whitehall. Andrew Bridgen, thank you very much. Thank you.